While its other recent mice have been heavily esports focused, lightweight, and stripped of any non essential features, the brand new Basilisk V3 Pro gets some extra love in a multi purpose, genre bending mouse. The wireless version of the older Basilisk V3, the V3 Pro features the same adjustable smooth or tactile scroll wheel full RGB, and some optional wireless charging features. But as we know, if Pro is in the name from Razer, then you're going to have to pay for it. So let's dive in and take a closer look at all the features of the Basilisk V3 Pro. Hey everyone, I'm Jordan with 9to5toys, and Razer is continuing its domination with its Pro lineup of mice, and this time we have one that's not eSports focused. The Razer Basilisk has always been more of a multi-genre mouse with a few more buttons than those aimed at just FPS players. Now this is just fine for FPS players, but it has a lot of the features that hardcore gamers might want to drop in the name of saving weight. And one of those notable features with the Basilisk has always been the adjustable scroll wheel, which on the V3 and this V3 Pro can and swap between a stepped and a smooth freewheel mode at the press of a button just below the scroll wheel. And as the V3 Pro name would infer, the Basilisk V3 Pro also takes full advantage of Razer's latest tech with hyperspeed wireless, the Focus Pro 30K sensor, and Gen 3 optical switches. Combine that with the full underglow RGB and is aimed at those who want it all in a gaming mouse but don't mind moving around a few extra grams of weight. And additionally, the Basilisk V3 Pro supports wireless charging with some optional accessories. A wireless charging puck will work with any Qi charger, while the Razer Mouse Dock Pro includes that puck and will wirelessly charge the Basilisk V3 Pro, and it also replaces the wireless dongle for Razer's hyperspeed wireless connection. And we mentioned having to pay for this being a pro mouse, and the mouse itself comes in at $160. The wireless charging puck, which I do have installed here, is $20, and the Razer Mouse Dock Pro comes in at $70 by itself. It also includes that wireless charging puck. The dock can come in a bundle with the Basilisk V3 Pro if you want to save a few bucks. So together, you can get both of them for $200, which is actually a pretty significant amount of savings considering that the mouse is $160 and the dock is $70. $70. So if you grab that bundle, you're saving 30 bucks. And moving on, let's talk about the design of the Basilisk V3 Pro, which if you've heard anything about the Basilisk V3, it's nearly identical. Even down to the RGB underglow under the mouse, it looks pretty similar apart from the obvious hyperspeed wireless connection. At its core, it is a right-handed ergonomic shape that has kind of a medium size for medium-sized hands. On the bottom of the mouse are large PTFE feet that have been slightly redesigned from the wired version to make room for that removable circular puck cover that by default hides a place to store the wireless dongle when not in use, but it can also be replaced with the optional wireless charging puck, which we'll talk more about later. When the Death Adder V3 Pro and the Viper V2 Pro went pro, uh, Razer ended up cutting all of the RGB from the mouse, but that is not the case on the Basilisk V3 Pro. As you can see, it still has the scroll wheel, still has a triple-headed snake, and it still has this large seamless ring of underglow lighting around here that looks really stylish. So for RGB lovers, it's a really clean setup that shines brightly. Moving on to shape and feel, the dimensions are unchanged, measuring at 130 millimeters long and 75 millimeters wide overall to the tip of that little thumb hold on the left side, but I'd say the grip width is more like 64 millimeters, somewhere around there. And the height comes in at 43 millimeters. And all of that comes together in a really comfortable mouse with a nice wide thumb rest on the left side. With my 131 grip that is kind of a mix between palm and claw, the weight feels like it's a bit towards the back, but it was even enough that it didn't really affect movement or, you know, kind of pull me out of the groove when playing fast-paced FPS games. And at 112 grams, it's also just a lot heavier than the 64 gram Death Adder V3 Pro that I have been used to recently. And while it's obviously much heavier than Razer's other recent Pro mice, the Basilisk V3 Pro really does feel good to use. It's a very comfortable shape for my grip, and the thumb rest feels like it's in the perfect position for my medium-sized hands. For buttons, the Basilisk V3 Pro has the standard mouse one and mouse two, then it has three left side thumb buttons. It has a scroll wheel that can also tilt left and right, and two buttons under the scroll wheel. 
on the bottom is an additional profile button. And one thing that makes the Bass Twist lineup unique is that third thumb button towards the front of the mouse. Razer often markets this as a DPI switch that can boost or slow down aiming speeds like in an FPS game, but it can also be mapped to any other input. One such example is Razer's Hypershift. Much like the Easy Shift feature from the Rocket Cone XP Air that we just reviewed, Hypershift unlocks an additional layer of customizable inputs by holding down that modifier. It's like holding down the function key on a keyboard to access an additional layer of control. And on the Basilisk V3 Pro and the V3, it's positioned in such a way that it doesn't get in the way of my thumb. My thumb isn't, you know, too far forward that I'm constantly hitting that button or, you know, accidentally hitting it when gaming. Uh, so I do think it's in a pretty optimal position, but it's still easy to reach if you do want to actuate it. And we touched on it briefly, and even though it's not brand new, the scroll wheel definitely deserves to be talked about because it's a pretty neat feature on the Basilisk V3 and V3 Pro. Just like on the wired V3, the Pro has the same electronic adjustment that takes the wheel between a standard stepped feel and a free spinning scroll wheel that just keeps going and going and going. It kind of feels like a fidget spinner at times. And from within Synapse, there are controls for acceleration that increases the scroll speed, as well as a smart reel mode that automatically activates the free spin scrolling mode when the wheel is moved quickly. In practice, I loved both the stepped feel for gaming and the free spinning mode for work and web browsing, but I couldn't get used to that smart reel mode. It seemed like it never stopped exactly when I wanted it to after activating the free spin mode with a quick movement. You can mainly feel that when this mode is enabled, but you can also hear it just a little bit. Uh, when the electronic little mechanism to kind of snap it back into that stepped mode, uh, you can hear it kind of click into that. And when you are in that smart reel mode, it just feels like it doesn't necessarily snap back when I would want it to to actually like stop the page mid scroll. But overall, it's pretty incredible how smooth that free spin mode is, but then also how good the tactile stepped feel is as well. It feels pretty much exactly the same as the Death Adder V3 Pro scroll wheel when that is enabled. And while there isn't the resistance adjustment that there is on some of the older Basilisk mice, uh, this is a really nice feature and to me seems a little more useful. And as a mouse in Razer's Pro line, Lineup. It is also packing the Focus Plus 30K sensor, which is the same in the Viper V2 Pro and the Death Adder V3 Pro. This sensor takes the max sensitivity up to a ridiculous 30K DPI with a max speed of 750 IPS and 70G max acceleration. And you know, it always seemed like Razer's mice were pretty excessive when it came to all of these, you know, sensor stats, uh, but this just has taken it up to the next level. Another benefit is a wide variety of surfaces that track smoothly, including glass that is at least two millimeters thick. And just like on the Viper V2 Pro and the Death Adder V3 Pro, I've never had any tracking issues with this mouse. The Basilisk V3 Pro is also using the latest Gen 3 optical switches, like those other Pro mice. Though all three mice sound just a little bit different, they're all rated up to 90 million clicks. The sound of the Basilisk V3 Pro is a little bit sharper and higher pitched than the other mice. And here I've got them all lined up. This is the Basilisk V3 Pro. Has a nice sharp click on mouse one. And mouse two sounds very similar. And here is the Viper V2 Pro. It's just a little more muted. Not quite as sharp. And then the Death Adder V3 Pro. which also sounds a little more muted than the Basilisk V3 Pro. And here, let's click around on the rest of the Basilisk V3 Pro so you can hear how that sounds. So mouse one and mouse two. Here's a scroll wheel. That's in the tactile stepped mode. And here is the smooth mode. So pretty much completely silent and that can be changed just with the top button on, uh, on here behind the scroll wheel. And so now we can also tilt the scroll wheel left and right, which gives a nice audible click. And now we'll move over to the thumb button. So first thumb button, second button, and that button towards the front. And here are the top buttons. That first one has the extra sound because it's engaging and disengaging that little electronic mode that, you know, changes the scroll wheel. And while directly out of the box with the included wireless dongle, the polling rate is limited to the standard 1000 Hertz. It can be increased up to 4000 Hertz by pairing the Basilisk V3 Pro with that brand new Razer Mouse Dock Pro. 
or you can also use the Hyperpolling Wireless Dongle, which worked on the new Viper and Death Adder. And both of these are sold separately. And let's touch on the Mouse Dock Pro here for a minute as well. So there was that wireless dongle that uh, increases the polling rate for the Death Adder V3 Pro and the Viper V2 Pro. And then that also works with the Basilisk, but Razer has this brand new Charging Dock Pro as well. And so the cool thing about this, I've probably seen it already in some of the B-roll, but there's this, this flat top to it. It's a wireless charger. They don't have the little prongs that go into the bottom of the mouse like on the Basilisk Ultimate but also something like the Rocket Cone XP Air uh, that we just reviewed. I'll you know, link that up here if you wanna check that out. So it's a very smooth, very uh, visually appealing dock because it is so sleek and so simple. And then the other part of that that comes with it is the wireless charging puck. And it's this little circle down here at the bottom which can be easily removed. It doesn't have much weight to itself, uh, but this holds a little cavity where you can put the wireless dongle that you aren't using uh, because the dock can replace your wireless dongle for that wireless connection. And then you can put this over top and this is what enables that wireless charging. So I'll plop it here on the uh, wireless charger, the wireless dock. You can see that it has a pretty good connection to it. You know, you can kind of go to the side and it's not gonna fall off. If you do any sort of like movement though, then it does come off. So it's a good enough connection for sitting on your desk, but it's not gonna like hold onto it too tight when you're trying to remove it from the dock. And one other note here, we mentioned it earlier, but the wireless charging puck can be bought separately. And so that enables this with the puck to work on any Qi charger. It doesn't have to be this uh, $70 dock, it could be any Qi charger, which is pretty awesome for recharging this mouse. And it would also surprise me if Razer, you know, only developed this for the Basilisk V3 Pro, which is, I mean, that's the only mouse that's available for right now, but it'll be interesting to see what happens in the future and, you know, what sort of functionality this gets expanded to with other mice. You know, with both the charging dock and this wireless charger, will we see like a Viper V2 Ultimate or a Death Adder V3 Ultimate that has the RGB, has the wireless charging? All these features that seem a little more top tier, but maybe aren't aimed at the uh, pro gamer who's just looking for the lightest weight mouse. So it'll be interesting to see what Razer does with this technology in the future. But really, with the Basilisk V3 Pro, it's wireless design, the RGB on it, the RGB on the uh, mouse dock pro here, they really are just a great looking combo. Uh, everything works very well on it. So while it's definitely a premium upgrade at $70, you know, it is very visually appealing. It's also pretty convenient just being able to plop your mouse on this charger at the end of the day when you're done using it. So if you're a Basilisk lover, you know, is it a necessary upgrade to go to the V3 Pro? I mean, that's totally up to you and what you are looking for as far as features and how much you're willing to spend on a mouse. Usually for me, you know, wireless mice are very convenient, but you're definitely paying a significant amount of money for that premium convenience over the wired Basilisk V3. And just like Razer's other recent mice, this is a great time to pick up the previous generation if you're looking for a good deal. Uh, right now on Amazon, let's see here, you can get the wired Basilisk V3, which lacks the wireless connection and it doesn't have the latest latest gen sensor or switches, but it's available for 56 bucks. It has the same scroll wheel, it has the same RGB, like the, the same exact design. So uh, a pretty good value there at just 56 bucks. Or if you really need wireless, you can pick up the Basilisk Ultimate, which is down to $80, which is down from the usual $170 price point, and that is with the charging dock. So if you don't need all the latest tech and you don't need all the latest features, you can get a pretty good deal on those mice. And we'll have links to those down in the description if you wanna check them out. All right, so overall, Wrapping up here, for those who want it all and aren't concerned about price or weight, the Basilisk V3 Pro really is a great multi-purpose mouse. It's extremely comfortable, it feels good, and has some awesome functionality built into it. On the other hand, if you want a little more functionality, check out the Rocket Cone XP Air, also wireless and just has a few more buttons, a little more functionality on the side of it. But that being said, the free scroll of the Basilisk V3 Pro and Razer's latest technology are some pretty big pulls towards the Basilisk V3 Pro. And and to me, Razer has also knocked it out of the park with the design of the dock and how that magnetic connection works for a visually pleasing charging experience. Personally, for me, when gaming, I usually prefer a lighter weight mouse and I don't really need all the functionality on the side here. And so I'll probably be sticking to the Death Adder V3 Pro as like my main driver for gaming, but there's definitely a case to be made for the Basilisk V3 Pro. A lot of great stuff in here if you're willing to pay for it. All right, and that's gonna do it for our review of Razer's new Basilisk V3 Pro. 
let us know what you think about it down in the comments below. And if you're looking for some other videos to watch, I'll link to our review of the Rocket Cone XP Air and also our most recent video. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so it's easier for other people to find and also consider subscribing. This is Jordan with 9to5toys.